Hey everybody, it's Dr. James McAdoo uh, in Hialeah, Florida. We operate in Hialeah at an ambulatory surgery center. So the recent hot topic is surgical infection. So across the board for me, I try and limit infection in multiple ways. The major things to worry about are operative site infection within the first three days of surgery, pneumonia, and urinary tract infections. An operative site will turn into bloodborne within day three or four. So if you prevent things from happening, that won't occur. Now, just from surgery alone, no infection involved, you're gonna see a white count elevation within a week after surgery. So you have surgery, no infection on board, but you go to the hospital for another reason and your white count will be way up in the air. That's just from the sheer trauma of the body undergoing surgery. You also see anemia because as you drip the IV fluid into the body, the blood becomes dilute within your blood vessels. And so when they scan the blood sample, it'll be more dilute with more water, which means that there will be less cells on the microscope eye, which means that your blood count will be low on your labs. So you'll see anemia, high blood count, and you'll probably see elevated temperature also as your body tries to heal itself, like 101.5 is kind of a normal temperature post-op because you got the garments on, your body's reacting and trying to warm itself, and all this extra activity is going on, cleaning up all the spaces from where you have surgery. So for me, in my practice, what I try and do is limit all that stuff. So before surgery, everybody checks their urine for infection, Everybody over 40 gets a chest x-ray. Anybody who's actively coughing gets a chest x-ray. Um, their, lab, their labs for a white count have to be normal. The, the red count has to be without anemia. And then um, after surgery, we have this extensive instructions that you'll probably see on a different post about how we ask all the patients to use 91% alcohol to spray their body down, all their garments and coverings twice a day. We restrict you from using water from the wall, from the tap, from the sink, from the shower for 10 days because in Florida, the water isn't sterile and there is a lot of bad stuff. So if you have an open wound and cut in your skin and you have different, like nine or 10 different spots when you have a BBL on your skin that, are, that have those little poke holes where you did the lipo, those can get exposed to that tap water from the shower or the sink if you wash yourself or even wash your garments and put them back on wet and that will set up an infection in your, your incision. So to prevent that, I restrict my patients from using tap water for 10 days, and I have a drain in all my patients for removing the lipo fluid from their abdomen faster to make their waist shrink faster. And that comes out usually on day seven. So I have a set plan where there's three days between the drain out and the shower starts. So the drain hole can close from the inside out for three days. So between the alcohol and no showering for 10 days. The next thing we do is we remove the ABDs and the actual faha or the surgical garment people call it that goes down to your knees. We take that off and throw it away on day two or three because there's a lot of blood on there from the day of surgery in the first night or two. And that's a source for uh, infection to grow. Also, the if the patient's urinating past it or defecating past it, it usually has contamination. And you can't really leave that on too long. If you decide to take that off and wash it, the washer doesn't sterilize it. It just mixes the bacteria through the entire garment because soap doesn't kill bacteria, all of it. It just kind of mixes all the bacteria from your garment. And if you happen to wash your other clothes with it, then all your other clothes have the bacteria on it. So no matter what you put on the next few days, it's gonna all be contaminated with that bacteria that was on your faha. So to get rid of that problem, I don't ask, I ask the patients not to wash it, leave it on for the first two days, and I take it off and actually throw it away, and replace it with a second stage garment, which is a vest trainer, vest, uh, vest waist trainer, or just a corset type thing. And it doesn't cover your bottom, it doesn't have the crotch in it, so you can go to the bathroom and clean yourself better. And we've seen a big improvement with that. So for me, the post-op garments are uh, faha, over top of that, there's a hernia belt, and then underneath that, there's lipofoam and, and um, the gauze, and then the tape. And then the first day back, we put the lipo board in there. Second day back, we take the faha off, and we replace it with the second stage garment. 
and during that time, as you're cleaning yourself, it's all sprayed down with 91% alcohol. Day seven passes, the drain comes out, you keep doing the alcohol bath and using the diaper wipes that are sterile, and then on day 10, you can actually get in the shower because usually all your incisions are closed. My infection rate, um, there's only been one patient that actually been to the uh, back to the office with infection since I've operated in 1996. And for BBLs, there's only been one uh, since I started doing a lot of those in 2014. And I've done about almost 6,000 BBLs. But there's been one patient, um, she was from Orlando, and she didn't actually get in the shower. She just said that she washed her faja the second day after surgery, and it wasn't completely dried. She put it back on. And then she started developing these baseball size lumps under all of her incisions for lipo. And we cultured that, sent it off, and it came back to Mycobacterium. Um, abscissa and Lepre, there are four different versions of Mycobacterium, which are known to be in the water supply in Florida. So she had to take antibodies for three months, and I had to put a drain in every lipo uh, port. So she had nine drains in her body at one time. Uh, those drained out about a period of two weeks and we took them out. But that's the only patient that ever had infection. It was mycobacterium that was confirmed from the water supply because of a wet garment. So don't wash your garments. Take them off and throw them away and get new ones. Wash yourself with alcohol. Don't get in the shower until day 10. Uh, if you don't have a drain, just wait until your incisions stop draining because uh, every doctor is different. And then wait those three days after it stops draining and you can get in the shower. And that's my recommendation to reduce infection.